Hi, welcome back to Holly Hobbies. Let's create a beautiful angel wing wreath that will be a meaningful addition to any home decor. These wreaths symbolize protection, peace, and spirituality, and they can be customized to match your personal style and preference. I will guide you through the process step by step to create a stunning wreath that you'll be proud to display. So gather your supplies and let's get started. Hi, welcome back to Holly Hobbies. I am so excited. We are going to do the angel wing wreath. I have been wanting to do one of these for a very long time. And I have researched many different styles and I fell in love with a certain style and I really want to share that with you. And I want to shout out to her. Her name is Patty Davis and she's with Crooked Tree Creations. And I will leave the link in the description box if you want to check out her YouTube. She has makes the most beautiful wreaths and I really love the style of angel wings that she did. I just think it is absolutely stunning. So I wanted to share that with you today and we're gonna get started. So we're gonna need two of the carrot wreath forms. We need some plastic mesh and we also need a six inch ring. So I'm either gonna use this one and see if I can make that work or I'm gonna cut this down to a six inch and use and use that. So we'll decide on that in a minute, but let's get started. So the first step is we are going to take our wire cutters and we're going to get all of the carrot top off and all this stuff off in the middle here. So I clipped off all of the excess. So we're left with this little wing here and you need a really strong set of wire clippers for this. So I have the carrot forms prepped here and I went ahead and cut my eight inch ring off and down to a six inch ring. So we're going to add the mesh to all of this and we want to keep, when we add it, we want to keep those grid lines straight up and down. Like you don't want to cut it like that. You want to keep it nice and straight. So I like to trace mine out with a Sharpie and then cut it. So I'm going to do that next. And we'll use as much of this piece as we can here. So we have enough to go on that ring as well. So I'm just going to take my Sharpie and making sure our grid lines are straight inside this carrot here. Now I use my favorite crafting scissors. They're off of Amazon. I always have the links to all my favorite crafting supplies in the description box to my Amazon store. These are amazing scissors, very heavy duty and really get the job done. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these out. So now we have all of our mesh cut out. We have our carrot wreaths prepped and I made this into my six inch frame. So we're gonna take some zip ties now and we're going to zip tie the mesh to these frames. And you don't need a lot of zip ties, you just need a few just to make sure that it's on there. All right, so we have all three of our pieces cut out and now we're going to assemble our angel wings with this in the center. And what we're gonna do is we're going to use our grid here and put the top of the frames at the very top so they're nice and even, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to pick a point. Let's move them out to the side a little bit. 
Okay, so let's say at the top of this grid right here, we're going to follow it down, which is the 10 inch mark, and we wanna go one, two, three. You could do three inches, or we're gonna do four. So we're gonna tilt it out so we have it at the top. We're using this guide right here, and we're going one, two, three, four, and we're adjusting the wing at an angle. So we're gonna do that same thing. It's nice and straight. We're coming to this point at the top of our grid, right around here, and we're following it down the mat, and we have one, two, three, gonna angle it to the four inch mark. So they're both angled, and it's up to you if you wanna do three or four inches. So we're lining here, around this spot right here, following it down, one, two, three, four. And we did the same thing here, came down the mat, one, two, three, four. So we angled it. So that's up to you if you wanna do your angle at three or four. So now we're gonna take our round wire frame and we're going to come down about an inch from the top. So I'm gonna use my grid there and I'm gonna place that, I have it see right here, which is approximately an inch from the top here. We're centering this onto right around like so. And we're going to zip tie this onto these frames here. And I wanna make sure I'm in the center. Use that as my center mark. Okay, so I'm using this crossbar as my center and I'm going to zip tie going through the mesh of my round ring and the mesh on my carrot ring and we're going to zip tie those together. I'm just going to try to hold those so I don't move my wings. Let's see if I can do this zip tie here. going to add some more zip ties throughout this wire frame here. All right, so I went ahead and took the round ring off and moved it down just a little bit, about an inch and a half down. So I like that placement better. And we have our angel wings um, angled at the four inch mark. So we're gonna move on to cutting our mesh and we are gonna use a 10 inch poly burlap mesh. I did get this one from the craft outlet and we're gonna need a wood burning tool to cut it with, which is gonna help seal those edges and keep it from fraying. And I have my favorite wood burner tool holder made by Susie's wreaths and things. And I do have the link to this in the description box of my tutorial. I just absolutely love it. It makes me feel like that is secure, that's safe, that's not gonna fall on me and burn me. So I just wanted to give a shout out to her. She, her, her and her husband make these and they're just, and they also make um, mesh holders and they're just, they have amazing items. So anyway, so that's what that is. A lot of people ask me what that is that's holding my um, wood burner. So I wanted to give a shout out for that. So we're going to take our mesh and I'm gonna just cut off this edge here, make a nice finished edge. And I'm cutting on a tempered glass surface. You always wanna make sure if you're doing that, you're cutting on a tempered glass. So for our pieces here, for our wings, we're going to cut a 10 and a half inch piece. So I'm going to cut that down, 
do one more. Well, we're gonna do a lot more, but I wanna show you the different types of petals. We have a left side and a right side, and they both have different curves. So, I have two pieces of my mesh cut at 10 and a half inches. So I'm gonna show you how to make the angel wing petal, and we have two different sides. We have the right side, where the curve's going on the right side, and the left side, where the curve's going on the left. So let me show you how to do that first, and then we'll move on to some different colored variation wings. So for the right side, we're going to take our mesh, curl side up with the finish edge on the top and the bottom. We're going to first take our left corner down and this unfinished edge right here, you wanna nestle it right on top of that finished edge, right in the beginning of that edge. All right, and see how I have it? You don't want it to go over. You want it to be right, right like so, right? And nestled into that top of that finished edge. Okay, so you're gonna get that the way you like it. And if you're right-handed and you can use your wood burner tool this way, then that's what I want you to do. But I am left-handed, so I'm gonna be flipping it around this way. And I have making sure that finish edge is nestled there. And now we're going to go ahead and cut. You're going to cut right along this edge, that finished edge, right at the end of it, taking it nice and slow and we're fusing these two pieces together. Okay, so if you were here and you were right-handed, you'd be like this. So I wanna show you that those, see how we have those fused together just a little bit? So now what we're gonna do is where this part, this is the fused part, where the unfused part, we're going to flip it over into, we're gonna leave about a half an inch gap or so, just like so. See how we just brought that corner over and we made another triangle. So this is our other triangle right here, like that, okay? And we have this little gap right there or a little space, about an inch space that we folded it over. See, just like that. So we had it like this. This was the part where we had laid the unfinished mesh on top of that finished mesh. And now we're flipping that over and see when we flip it over, we're just seeing that finished edge. We're not seeing that part that we had there. That's why you want that to nestle on top of that finished edge so you can't see that unfinished edge all you see is all this finished part of your mesh okay so now we have we made another triangle see where these two points are open we're gonna go fan fold up this side of the edge so from this open unfinished part we're going up to the finished part so we're going to tuck those two edges under and we're just going to pinch and grab up the edge of that triangle, just like so. And we've made, see that? We've made a petal. And we've made the right side petal. And look at those beautiful edges that we see is just this beautiful finished edge petal. Look at how pretty that looks. So once again, let's do the right side one more time together. So we have the finished edge at the top and the bottom. We're bringing our left side down and we're nestling that unfinished edge right on top of that finished edge right before it starts. 
and you want this to be a nice crisp corner when you're doing it. Okay, just like so. And like I said, if you're right-handed, you're going to just take your tool and go down the right side. But since I'm left-handed, I'm gonna flip it this way so I can cut that corner with my left hand or cut this edge. So now I'm using this finished edge as my guide and I'm just going alongside that edge, nice and slow, using that as my guide to cut off this excess mesh and helping to fuse the two pieces together. Okay, so that was on that side and you see we have that fused together. So now you take the edge of your triangle that's not fused and you flip it over to the other side and we're leaving this nice little half inch to three quarters of an inch like that space in between the the two pieces and then now we formed another triangle and now we're coming fan folding up this edge the edge that's not this is a whole folded edge here and this is the open edge we're folding up the open edge side so we're tucking our corners under and we're just fan folding to that finished side and then we have another beautiful angel wing that's going on the right side with that right side curve and see we have another beautiful wing there so now we're going to work on the left curve let me show you the left one now so now we have our finished edges on the left and the right, and we're going to make the left petals now. And instead of bringing the top down, we're going to bring the bottom up. And we're going to take this unfinished edge and nestle it just like we did the other way on this side now. And making sure I'm laying it down right before that that finished seam there. And sometimes it just takes a little bit to get it the way that you want it. You don't want it hanging over. You want it to be laying on the inside there. Okay, so there's that. And now we're going to cut. If you're right-handed, you're gonna cut along here. I'm gonna turn it this way so I can cut it you see all the struggles of a left-hander getting my edge back where it should be and you're cutting that seam now cutting along that finished edge being careful not to burn yourself number one And just getting that tip of that finished edge, following it down, nice and steady flow there. And it's helping to seal both of those edges together. Okay. So there we have that. And we have that part fused together. We're taking our this part now, this was our unsealed part and we're flipping it over. So when we flip it over, we have that beautiful finished seam, just like so. And then we formed this other triangle here. And now, just like we did before, this is the closed part, this is the open part. We're gonna go up this open part of the triangle and fan fold. So we're tucking the open ends 
and we're folding it up towards the finished side here. And we're using our zip tie. And by the doing it the way we're doing it, we're just creating a beautiful edge here that's you all as you see is those beautiful finished edges and it just gives it such a beautiful look with this poly burlap mesh so now that is how we did the left so let's do one more left side together so we're going to do another left together and i have my Ten and a half cut. I have my finished edges on the left and the right, and this one I'm bringing my bottom right corner up, and I'm putting that right below that seam, the unfinished seam below that finished seam, and we're gonna go ahead and cut the excess off using that finished edge as our guide. And fusing those together, we're just taking a little tiny piece of that finished edge. And that's helping to fuse all of this together. And there's our triangle, and we're taking the, un this is the fuse side, the unfused side. We're flipping that over. We're leaving about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch, and we have another triangle, and we're fan folding up this open side. So we're flipping that under, the corner under, as we fan fold up that edge forming another beautiful petal and we're going to go ahead and place our zip tie. And look at that. You just see that beautiful finished edges of the way that we did that. And it just gives it a beautiful, beautiful finished look. Look at that. So pretty. Okay, so now we're going to do the ones with our color. So this special set of angel wings that I'm making for someone in particular, I'm making it for a boy um, color. So I want it more um, blues, um, kind of ocean colors. Um, so you can pick four colors of your choice. Um, I'm not quite sure what my fourth color is going to be, but I have, so far I have these colors picked out and I, I need to add one more color in there as well, or I can just keep it the three colors. I'm still debating on what I'm going to do with that. But in the meantime, let me show you how we're going to do the colored fused petals now. So we're going to cut six pieces of our deco mesh color. And let me clean up this edges, this edge here. And I'm going to just go ahead and use my wood burner. You don't have to, you can use your rotary cutter on the regular deco mesh. It's up to you. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut these into nine inches. And we're going to need six pieces of each color cut into nine inches. So let me do my six pieces here. So with the deco mesh, we're going to have lefts and right sides as well. So we're going to cut these at a diagonal. So I have my finished edges on the left and right, and I'm going to tilt it like so. And I'm going to go ahead and cut it diagonally from corner to corner. 
just like that, okay? And that's going to be, those are going to be one side. Now, the other side, we're going to do the finish edge on the left side. The other one, we did it on the right. Now it's on the left, and we're going to do this corner to corner as well. Okay, so that's how we're going to cut our six pieces. So that now we have the a left side and a right side. So we'll do that again. So for the right sides, our finish edge is on the right. And we're cutting corner to corner at a diagonal. And our other side, the finish edge is going to be on the left. And once again, we're doing it at a diagonal, cutting corner to corner. And at this part where it meets the finished seam, you want to make sure you're, you're cutting right there so it's a nice crisp corner. All right, so let me finish up these last two. We're going to make sure that we have some more pieces of our white, because we're gonna do that same thing. We're going to have a left and a right side, just like we were doing before with our white. Now we're making colored petals that we're going to add, and it is just going to make this wreath absolutely stand out from all the rest, and it is going to be breathtaking. So now we're doing our 10 and a half piece of white here, and now I'm going to show you how to add the color into your petal. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing like we're doing before, a left side and a right side, but we're going to add our poly mesh, our color to our petal. So we're going to do another right side, which means I have my finish edge at the top and the bottom, and I'm bringing that left corner down, just like we're making a petal, a regular petal for the right side, okay? So I'm gonna line everything up just like I was doing before. So now here's what we're gonna do a little bit different, is we're taking our right side of that poly mesh that we just cut, and we're going, see how it matches the triangle here? We're gonna take this finish edge, and we're going to go along the other finished edge, the finished edge that we would fuse. So we're going to line the finished edges up here, just like so. Okay. See how that's lined up over the, the white finished edge, and I have the poly burlap finished edge right on top. And see how that triangle just fits right on top of that the same way. Doesn't have to be perfectly exact at this point. And so now what we're gonna do is we're going to take our wood burner tool and I'm only turning it because I'm left-handed. And I we're gonna fuse it just like we did before, but this time we have that color right there on top. So we're gonna take our wood burning tool and we're gonna follow that finished edge of our poly burlap and keep following down following the line down and my dog is getting into my ribbon here I had to take a little break my dog decided to grab some ribbon and now we're going to continue down 
that finished edge go mesh refusing on top of that poly burlap mesh. Now, see how we have that all fused together right there? So we have the edges fused just like we would a normal petal doing it on the right side. And now we're going to go ahead and fold our, our wing just like we did before. And we're leaving about an inch or so right there. We're not worrying about all that right now. And we're turning it. And then we're gonna go ahead and pinch and grab right down that edge exactly the same way that we would do our petal if it was gonna be for the right side. The only thing we did different was we added when we were gonna cut that that one side with our wood burner tool, we added that piece of colored mesh. And look at how beautiful that is with that blue fused petal. It's just absolutely gorgeous. It just gives it that beautiful color. So let's do another one together. And then we have this at the tip, which is just going to get cut off just like that. So we did it exactly like that, but we have color in it now. So there we have our second blue, this beautiful aqua blue that's fused onto that white deco mesh. And look at how pretty that looks. And those are the right-sided petals. So now we're going to use our some that we have ready for our left-sided petals. All right, so what we're gonna be doing is, we did the two for the right, we're gonna be doing six of the colors on the right and six of the colors on the left. So let's go ahead and do the left side now. The finished edges on the left and the right, and we're bringing the bottom corner up and we're doing our left petal now. So we're just doing that same exact thing. It shouldn't be any different than what we're, we have done before, except we're just fusing that colored mesh onto that finished seam that where we're gonna fuse anyways. And now I'm gonna take my mesh that I cut for the left side, and this is the side we fold, so you don't have to make sure that that corner doesn't have to be right at the end. You, this is the one you want to have at the very edge of your mesh there, because that's what you're going to see when you when it's all folded. Okay, so we're lining up the edges. And now I'm going to take my wood burning tool and I could come this way because we're not, we're not, this is going to get folded in, make it easier for me to see here. And now I'm just going to start fusing that mesh by going over the top of it at a nice, slow and steady pace here and I'm just using that finished edge as my guide as I'm coming down that mesh and once again now we have that fused the color is fused on that edge there and we're just doing exactly what we did before is we're taking that that edge here. This was our open part and we're folding it over. We're doing the same exact thing, but we have this mesh in here now. And we don't want it sticking over this edge. Folding that just like we would make our left sided wing, but now we have that color fused in there. And this is our open side of our triangle that we're going to tuck and pleat and grab to the finished edge and use our zip tie. 
and we have the little excess at the top that will clip off with our scissors. And now we have a petal that we have with our fused blue, this beautiful aqua. And now we have the left-sided one. So we're gonna keep doing the same exact technique until I use up all my blue. I want six on the left, six on the right with the colors. So I'm gonna keep doing that same thing. It does take a little time, but the results are spectacular. When we're finished with this wreath, it is really just gonna completely stand out and it is gonna be a showstopper for sure. So I'm gonna keep moving along and keep doing these colors here. And I still have to figure out, this is the part right here that we want at the edge. This is the part that we're gonna be folding under. So that one can be, doesn't have to be right at the top there. And we have our mesh on there. So this part, I could just kind of go across like that, okay? Because that is the part that we're folding under. So now I'm just going right behind that seam there, fusing that deco mesh on top of the poly burlap. Okay. And the same thing, we're folding that over. This is our side that we're tucking and pleating to that finished edge right there. And look at how beautiful that is. So I am going to continue Finishing up this blue, and then I'm going to move on to my next color that we're going to use in this design. And then we're going to do that same thing as the six petals on the left, six on the right with the next color. And as you can see, we have the two left and the two right with that beautiful aqua blue color. So I'm gonna keep moving on and I will check back when I get all six of these finished, or all 12 of them, six for each side. All right, so I finished the six of the fused aqua color on for the left and the six for the right. And now we're going to pick another color. I'm gonna use this beautiful blue and we're going to do that same exact thing. So we're going to need 12 more of our white poly burlap, 10 and a half pieces. And we're going to cut six of our nine inch pieces with our next color and cut those in that diagonal. And now I have my next color my left side and my right side diagonal nine inch pieces. And we're just gonna continue doing that same thing. If we're doing the right side, our seams are on the top and bottom. The left sides, our seams are on the left and the right. So I just wanna point out, I just fused this on the edge and this is the only part you don't want coming over that edge. It can come over the folded edge back here. You just don't want that blue to come over this white finished edge right there. So just wanted to make that point because when you fold it, you don't want it coming down the bottom right there. And now I have my six petals on the left side of my blue, six on the right with this beautiful blue. So now we're going to move on. We're gonna put those off to the side. 
And I know this is very time consuming, but the result is going to be so pretty. So now we're going to move on to our next color, which is going to be this beautiful coral green, which is a little bit different than this one here. So let me get, now we need 12 more white prepped at the 10 and a half and six more prepped at in our next color. And I'm gonna keep doing the same thing until I get all four of my colors prepped and then we'll be ready to attach them to the wreath frame. So these are the colors that I have done right now. I have my beautiful turquoise, this blue, and this other blue here. And now we're gonna do one more color and we're going to use this blue because I want it to have that kind of ocean vibe fill. And we're going to taper all these blues and it's just going to look really pretty. So now we're going to get our frame. We have our petals divided, the left side over here, the right side over there. And we're going to get started adding these to our angel wings that we created here. Now we put it together like this. We're gonna flip it over and this is how we're going to do our wings on this side. So now we're gonna take a Sharpie and we're gonna make a grid on our angel wings. And we're gonna use our measuring um, cutting mat here to guide it. I have the tip of my wing right here on a line and I'm gonna Mark one inch, just using that cutting mat as my marker here. And then I'm gonna go every two inches. And I'm gonna just keep going. And I'm gonna mark I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side as well. We'll go right up here. So then I have one inch and then I have my two inches. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. And now we're going to use our grid. We're gonna center our carrot here. Just using my grid to make sure we have this all centered as best as we can. And then we're going to use this line and follow it straight down the center of the carrot. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. Okay, so now we're gonna get started. Um, I am gonna follow a certain pattern. Uh, I'm gonna follow Patty's pattern. She used four different colors and she placed them on a certain way and it just looks breathtaking. So we're going, you're gonna decide which way you wanna tear your colors. I'm going for an ocean look so I'm going to start with my dark blue first and then I'm going to go to this next blue then to my lighter blue and my turquoise blue so that's going to be my pattern so we're going to start with our first one and we're using the middle of our our grid here and we're going to go through right in the center of that line and we're going to skip a hole and we're going to bring our zip tie up and I'm just going to preload it and that it just makes it a little bit easier. We're going to place our first petal right there into our design and we'll go ahead and place that on and we're going to do that same thing now 
on the right side as well. We're just gonna keep mirroring what we're doing here. And now I'm going to my right side. You're making sure you're grabbing the right petals, following that my grid, skipping a hole. And now we're going to add our next one. And I'm starting with my darkest of my blues at the bottom here. So now we're moving on to our next one and we're going up to that next line and we're gonna do our next two. So I'm gonna come in a few squares and I'm going around the wire frame for my next one here. And the same thing on the other side, on the left side of my grid, I'm coming around that bar. When we're placing our next set of petals, we always want to go from the outside in, in the way that we place them. So I'm going to get my next set ready here. And then the next one, we're going to place two petals and we're on each side of our grid line there. And you're making sure you're grabbing the right ones, the left side and the right side. And I'm working now from the outside in. So I'm bringing my next petal and I'm placing it right in there. doing that same thing, working from the outside going in. So now we have that next set placed. So now we're moving up to our next row and we're going to be doing three. So we're going to get all of our zip ties prepped on this line and that grid line just makes it so easy to know where you're going to place everything and let me get all these ready on each side so now with this next set we're going to start transitioning colors and i'm following patty's pattern and it is just the most beautiful pattern, the way she did her colors and the way they transition. So we're gonna stick along that same concept. So the next one, we're gonna start with our blues, just like we're doing, and we will transition. Let me cut this out the top here. That one I missed. And then we're going to transition our colors a certain way. Okay, so we're going to start, we're still working from the outside going in, and you have to decide what was your next transition of colors, and then we're going to do that for that last one is going to be our next color that we're going to be transitioning into. So my next transition color was going to be this other blue, a different kind of blue that I had used. All of this is ocean inspired colors. I want it to kind of feel like the ocean and all the different beautiful colors of the ocean. So now that last one on the inside, we've transitioned into our other blue. So same thing for this side. And now we're moving up to our next grid line and this line is going to have four. So let's go ahead and get our everything loaded here and ready to go. 
for this next row of four, we have our dark blue. I have my two other blues. And now I'm going to transition into my next color, which is going to be this other beautiful shade of blue. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between my, see I have this blue and I have a turquoise. So they're a little bit different, but they're easy to mistake. So now I'm moving to my next transitional color here that's going on the inside of this row now. So this next row, we're going to have five now, okay? So let's get our five prepped here. So our next row was the two of our second shade of blue, my two other more like a um, beautiful seafoam blue and a white on the inside. That is the next row. So now we're going to move to our next grid line. All right, so now we're making it our way onto our next grid line and this grid line is going to consist of six. Okay, and then we're going to go just imagine that grid line going over here into that other ring. So we're going to do three and three. So let's start the end here. I'm going to get these preloaded, my six of them. So my next row, the six is going to be this last blue that we used. We had one left. That's going to go on this outside and that's going to complete that color. That's all six of those. And we're going to do two of this color that we had, my seafoam blue. And the other three are going to be plain white. And you see this is making a beautiful pattern with our colors. And now our white. And that's how we're gonna do the next row. So I'm gonna do that same on the other side. So the next three we're using our last blue here and then I'm coming into my seafoam green here. And I want them just to look about like this, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place this first one so it's coming off the top of the wreath, coming around that bar. It's kind of right touching that middle part of the grid coming right off the top. And the next one, 
and the next one. See how they're all just kind of kind of layered and staggered on each other. So we'll do the next one right here. And you can have it like push it so it's coming out a little bit more off off the edge of your wreath. So we'll do something like that. And now I'm working on to those next colors. And then I'm going to put my last of these blues right here. All right, so now we have the three, our last blue and our two of the last colors. And now we're going to go ahead and add one white here at the top of each of these right we're coming right around that top of that wreath frame and let's go ahead and add those now so now we're going to start staggering our last color and filling in this little area here so this is going to be up to you just find your placement and then you can Get your zip tie after you find where you want it. There's no grid for this part, so this is going to be what, what you like, how you want to stagger it and fill in. So we'll do that one right there. And we'll go ahead and fill in this space here with a couple more greens our last transition color and then before we get ahead of ourselves we're going to do that same thing on this other side we're going to fill in some more of our green. Staggering those right over the tops of the other ones. Now we're going to add the very last of our blues right in here and then we'll do a white on the inside of those and then we're going to be down to the very last all of our whites and that's it so let's get these two added here So we've added all of our colored petals and all as we have left now is the rest of our white. So now we're going to play around with our whites and we're going to add, we're just going to add some more whites. Whether or not we use all the five, I'm not sure, but let's start placing some whites on here. here, this little gap. And whatever we do to one side, make sure that we mirror it on the other side to keep this nice and uniform. going to do that same thing over here. That 
somewhere like so. So now it's totally up to you. We're just going to squeeze in a few more of these whites here. Do something like that for the next two. Okay. So I added two more whites here and this is what we have so far. And let's see if we want to add maybe a couple more. Maybe try to get one right there and one right there. And then I think that is going to be it. So we are going to be left with um, a couple more, but I if you want to squeeze those in, that's up to you. But I think I'm going to leave it just like that. So we added all of our wing petals. I do have two left over on the right and two left over on the left of the white, which I'm not going to use. And you're welcome to fill those in if you want. Um, that's totally up to you. You can add some more white up here if you want. We're going to decorate the center. This is where you're going to use your creativity and just have fun with some greeneries, some florals. I'm definitely going to go make a trip to Michael's and Hobby Lobby. I wanted to complete this first to kind of have a vision in my head of what I wanted to do. I definitely want to make it um, very like uh, beachy, more um, like simple. Um, so maybe some lamb's ear, some so a little bit of subtle greenery. Um, so I'm gonna go and pick out some florals and decide what I'm gonna do for the center but I want you to take this time to think about what you want to do. And there's so many options. You could do big sprays of greenery. You could do a big bow in the middle, a bow and some flowers. That is going to be totally up to you. And um, so we're going to come back and finish up this tutorial here. And I'm going to decide what I'm going to do. But look at how pretty that is with that beautiful transition of all those beautiful blues it just definitely screams the ocean and I love it so much so I'll show you how I did all of this and um I just want you to have fun and I've had some people suggest a picture frame or you could do a little plaque um, there's just so many things you can do a bunch of greenery with a big some flowers in the middle um, the sky is the limit on the center part you make that um, how you want to make it and you just let whatever talks to you and your wreath so I went ahead and it took me a couple days to figure out how I wanted to do the center. I went back and forth with greenery and flowers versus a bow. And I decided on the stacked ribbon bow, which is my favorite bow. And I do have the tutorial on my YouTube channel as well. And I will link that in the description box below. So I went ahead and did the stacked ribbon bow and tried to pull out all the colors of my wreath. And I added a little bit of greenery here, a little bit here, with just a few simple florals here in the middle. And I'm going to take this apart, and then I have some tulips at the top here. And um, we'll put it back together. It's just basically the bow. This I have to glue. And this is some more of floral sprig right there, and my little fern greenery and my tulips. So I'm gonna use some hot glue. You can zip tie 
anything to the mesh. Um, we still have some mesh at the top here. You can um, do a combination of zip ties and hot glue. That's completely up to you. So I went ahead and decided on a stacked ribbon bow, which is my absolute favorite bow. I used all of these colors and I doubled up on this darker blue, giving me a total of eight stacked ribbons in this beautiful bow. And I thought all the different textures, colors, and prints are really going to highlight the design and the gift that I have it intended for. So I wanted to show you the ribbon that I used. So what I did is I made my beautiful stacked ribbon bow here, and I have it placed with the two and a half inch ribbon on the left and the right. And all as I did was, I don't wanna put this all the way in the, on the, mat and mess up the bow but I just when I make the stack ribbon bow I put a pipe cleaner in uh, before I zip tie it together and that's what I brought through the mesh and I'm going to secure it give it some twist on the back and that gives me my beautiful bow that I decided to go with So that was my bow. And now I wanted to add some extra touches with some florals and some greeneries. So I decided to go with some fern greenery. And you see how we still have a little bit of this mesh right at the top there? That's what I'm gonna use to, I can either glue or I can zip tie this greenery to my frame here and that is going to protect my cutting mat and i'm going to put some dabs of hot glue right on that fern and i'm going to give it just a little touch of greenery coming out that top part of my wreath so i'm going to go ahead and gonna glue my fern in the design And I'm gonna add this last little piece of fern to kind of fill in right there. And then I had some of these cute little tulips. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that stem part that wire on the stem and I'm going to just poke it right through that mesh and bend it. Use the, my wire to secure it into place right there. And now I wanted to add another greenery, another piece of fern down here under the bow. So I'm gonna glue that in there. And I'm actually just going to use this little part to catch it under that bow and then I can just add a little hot glue because I like that trailing out right there. So let me get this ferner, fern in here. I'm going to add some glue and I'm going to place that right where I want it. And 
that one I have hooked on the bow, so I'm really not worried about that. When I add the final hot glue to this, it'll go on top of that as well. Then I just have this other cute tip of a flower. And I just try to bring out the colors in this beautiful wreath in the bow and in some of the florals. This is a special gift for someone who lost their precious baby boy at birth. And this is my way to say how sorry I am and make them a beautiful memorial for their precious baby boy. And that completes our design today. I hope you had fun crafting your beautiful angel wings with me today and that you'll come back to my channel and craft with me some more. And in the description box down below, you will find the link to my Amazon store with all my favorite crafting supplies. And if you ring that bell, you'll get notifications for my future tutorials. And please leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought of this tutorial and subscribe, like, and follow me for more wreath and crafting ideas. Thanks for watching Holly Hobbies from my heart to yours. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and follow me for more wreath and crafting ideas. Thanks for watching Holly Hobbies from my heart to yours.